Now that you understand what to avoid, we can move on to video 3 and talk about how to find profitable domain names. Now there's a specific technique that I'm going to show you that many of you have probably already used. So it should be pretty easy to implement. Let's talk about generic domain names versus non-generic. Generic domain names are basically domain names like televisions.com or computers.com. So a generic term or generic word basically covers a whole class or is a big, big topic. A non-generic term would be like a subtopic, like plasmatelevisions.com. Most generic domain names are taken, but it doesn't always hurt to find more. While they are taken, you can still focus on non-generic domain names and still make good money with them. Non-generic, they would be about two to three keywords, sometimes four keywords depending on how profitable they can be. For example, instead of televisions.com, you can go for plasmatelevisions.com or lcdtelevisions.com. Basically two word domain names that are popular. Because if you think about it, in this world, televisions.com is very broad. Plasmatelevisions.com you can focus on companies and businesses that are selling plasmatelevisions.com or lcdtelevisions.com or even a specific type of plasma television. Maybe they are a specific size of plasma televisions. So you can sort of see where I'm getting at. The keyword is very important here. If the keyword is profitable. You've got people that are searching for that specific two to three or for a keyword phrase, then most likely that domain is too. So you can search for those as well. Using the specific method, very easy method to use by the way, just doing your keyword research and then doing your profitability research. Doing these two things will help you find profitable domain names. Are right, some quick rules here. Most generic terms, like one word terms, are already taken. But there are still diamonds in the rough, which means there are still generic terms out there that are not taken. Maybe they're acronyms like HDTV. I'm sure that one's already taken. But you get my point. Acronyms, popular acronyms, um, popular sayings, you know, they don't have to be proper English. They could be a specific saying that is popular that there's a huge market out there for but nobody has actually taken it if you do find generic terms like I said remember avoid going out and getting .net .tv .org domain names but if you find a generic term then it's okay to venture outside into .com .net things like that if the term's not generic, you probably don't want to venture outside. Otherwise, you're going to lose money. Now, there are some special cases, but for the most part, that's the case. Now, here's the strategy that I'm talking about. It's like keyword research. The point here is that you're trying to find keywords people are already bidding on. For example, PPC. Or you're trying to find keywords that people are searching to buy a specific product or to sign up for that specific service. If you can find those keywords, you can turn them into domain names. Then you can check whether or not those domain names are available. If they are, then you still got yourself a gold mine. You see where I'm getting at? We're looking for profitable keywords. That's pretty much it. Before you start to do your keyword research, you're probably going to have to know what kind of niche or sub niche that you're going to get into. Now, if I was going to go into plasma televisions, I might want or electronics to get some ideas. I could go to newegg.com or some sort of electronic place. So newegg.com sells computer stuff, laptops, electronics and televisions. So if I go to televisions, 
on the left side, I'm going to see things like plasma televisions, plasma TV, LCD TV, LCD televisions, uh, home theater projectors. Even though these are like three, three word here, four words there, they are still profitable because you know people are searching for them. Now, what kind of home theater projectors? What kind of LCD TVs or what kind of plasma TVs? So if I click on that, you don't want to bid on like Panasonic plasma televisions or Samsung because you would be you know breaking trademark law right there. But it's okay to bid on you know things without the trademark. Now, because there are so many different types of plasma TVs out there, I could even bid on a specific type of plasma TV, maybe 40 inch plasma TV, 50 inch plasma TV, 52 inch, blah, 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 you know, things like that, or uh, 1080p plasma TV. You know, you can get all, you can create all these ideas about all these different keywords. And you can see that it would still be profitable if you had a domain name that was like 50 inch plasma TVs. Then companies that are selling 50 inch plasma TVs, assuming that people are going to Google and typing that in, which probably would be the case, then it would be indeed profitable. Now, that brings us to keyword research. I have an idea of what I kind of keywords I want to find. So I would recommend two tools. Word Tracker's free keyword tool, which is located at freekeywords.wordtracker.com, and the other one, which is keywordspy.com, as you can see here. Keyword Spy allows you to find keywords that people are bidding on. So if people are bidding on it, it must be a profitable keyword. People are driving traffic to that keyword, to their business. But a lot of people overlook the fact that because people are, are searching for that keyword phrase, most people overlook you know, buying that specific domain name of that keyword phrase. So you see where I'm going with this. So if I go to Word Tracker and I type in plasma televisions, let's see what I get. I get plasma televisions, plasmas versus LCD televisions. You know, you could even get that. Plasma versus LCD televisions. I mean, who knows if that exists? Let's, let's go to Namecheap.com and check and see whether that exists. If you're wondering, okay, why would I want to bid on a domain like that? Well, think about it. If you had that domain name, you could do a review on plasma and tele LCD televisions, get people to sign up onto your list, and then sell, maybe do a review on different things. So let's see if that is actually available. And it is. Now you kind of have to think out of the box here because most people are like, ah, eh, that, that wouldn't be that profitable. Well, I mean, if you look at it, we've got 114 searches for that and that's, that's not bad that's pretty good so you, you can really if you think out of the box and be creative then you really can turn these into profitable domain names and then when I show you how to flip the domain name you yourself you might be able to flip it um, to the point that even you're doing so well that you don't even want to sell the domain name but a year later you're doing so well with that domain name that you can sell it because you got proof you see what I'm saying? So we've got other places like Panasonic Plasma Televisions. That would be a good idea not to buy that domain name or Costco or anything like that. Flat screen televisions, disadvantages of tele plasma televisions, 50-inch uh, plasma televisions, sort of like what I was talking about earlier. Let's see if that's available. Basically, what you want to remove the, uh, the spaces in between the keyword. Click on search. 
Yeah, we'll see if that is available or not. And, well, it looks like it was already taken. But that right there is a good idea. So you see where I'm going with this? I'm basically using free uh, word tracker tool to create a list of keywords and then thereby erasing the, you know, the spaces in between. So let's say that I, I do choose and copy and paste a bunch of these keywords shop plasma televisions online I probably want you know to stick up here above here so I can make sure that I get you know, keywords that people are actually going to so I might replace yeah I might put that there or erase that but what I'm doing here is just mainly showing you an example, 32 plasma television. Alright, so let's say that I have created a whole list of, you know, things like that. I can still go to Keyword Spy and type in plasma televisions. And it's a good thing to just check two sites, Word Tracker as well as keyword spot and if I go here under let's say let me expand that a little bit we can see the search volume and the cost per click per keyword So we can even click on, let's see here, click on ads just to see what kind of ads there are. And the cool thing is you got to realize that people are paying money to bid on these keywords. But a lot of them overlook the fact that there are, you know, the domain names, bidding on these domain names. So I can look at the pay-per-click competitors and see what kind of you know keywords that they have so when I'm done creating my keyword list and remember the whole idea here is not to just go out there and create a list of a hundred you know or a thousand keywords we're not bidding on keywords here we're, we're finding profitable keywords so what you want to do here is create a list it's okay if it's a list of five or a list of ten or a list of twenty so what I want you to do is just copy this into Notepad. And you see that there's spaces here, right? And I don't want to go through the whole thing and create, you know, delete, delete all the spaces. So what I do is highlight that space and then I cut it and I go to replace and I paste it, right? Paste that space. Re replace it with no space because what happens here is we're removing the spaces. See how fast that was? And then what I want to do is add .com to everyone. So .com, 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 .com. All right, so once you have created your keyword list, you have found profitable keywords in a specific niche or sub-niche that you want to buy, then what? What you're going to have to do next is to take all those keywords and then create the keyword list and then basically remove all the spaces in the keywords and then add, dot, add a dot com at the end of the keyword phrase and then you want to need to check whether or not that domain name is free or not well how do you do that well I'm going to show you in just a minute alright so now that you've used the tools and you've created a list of domain names the next thing you need to do is go to um, a specific website where you can check whether those domain names are available or not. Now, of course, you could go to Namecheap or you could go to Enom or whatever domain registrar and search for them one by one. But to save you time, I want to show you a website where you can search for a lot of domain names in bulk at one time. 
If you go to domaintools.com slash bulk dash check. And if you don't know that, you can also go to domaintools.com and they're gonna have a link here for bulk check. So it says enter one domain per line or separate with a space or comma. So what I'm gonna do here is just do that. I'm gonna copy this over, paste it, and then click submit. And then what it's gonna do is it's going to show me what's available. So right now somebody already took the .com here and .com. But what is available is plasma television 46 inch or plasma versus LCD televisions or shop plasma television online. Now that's a four word keyword phrase, but remember there's still a lot of people searching for that keyword phrase, right? Because people are searching for that keyword phrase, you know, there's a big chance people are interested in buying you know, a plasma television 46 inch. If somebody's typing that in, they're most likely interested in that. So as you can see here, this method, very, very simple to easy to use, but as you can see, very, very profitable. Because you approach the right people, you've done your keyword research, and all you have to do is hand the buyer the research you did you know, for the keyword research. Now, there is, you know, profitability research, which I'll show you later on how to do. Okay, great. Now let's move on and talk about another tactic. You can find expired domain names. There are, are many, many sites out there that provide lists of expired domain names. Domain names that are possibly about to expire or domain names that have expired. Now you got to keep in mind that there are also thousands and thousands of people out there doing the same thing as you are. That's why I say the first technique is probably a lot better because you do the proper keyword research and profitability research and you figure up from that point and then you register the domain name. In this case you're defining expired domain names and I'll show you some sites that you can go to to do just that. Now, if you're thinking, well, I, I still don't really understand what expired domains names are. Basically, expired domain names are domain names that the owner, you know, forgot to renew. Because remember, domain names, we don't necessarily own a domain name. We rent it out every single year. You can once you have it rented, you can rent it for the rest of your life if you want to. But for the most part, it's typical that the owner can, you know, forget to renew them. So let's say somebody owned televisions.com or plasmatelevisions.com. They forgot to renew it. Guess what? If they forget to renew it, it's not a trademark name, then you can grab it. But how do you know if it was you know, dropped or not. These sites will help you find just that. Of course, it would be pretty stupid if somebody owned plasmatelevisions.com forgot to renew it. And for the most part, a lot of people can renew it like 10 years, 30 years, or 10 years in advance, I believe it is. But these sites will help you find expired domain names. So you got justdrop.com, then you have deleted domains dot com deleted domains requires you to purchase a membership which would make sense if you are indeed getting updated and brand new domain names that have been expired so you can search these two sites or you can go to google and look for expired domain memberships as well but these are just two just to give you a head start now, the question that I know many of you will be asking is how do you price a domain name? Let's say that you have found some domain names that you have been, have found that they are indeed profitable. Well, how do you do that? Well, you can measure how many people look for that keyword. All right, so we've already pretty much done that, but you want to double check that 
and make sure that you have the numbers down. You do the proper keyword research, see how many people are typing that keyword into Google every day. Then you want to measure how much profit one could make from selling products. Now this is going to be hypothetical. Unless you have actual traffic coming to the site, which I'll show you later on how to do that, unless you do that, the domain name, this is going to all be hypothetical. So you're measuring how much profit one could make. So let's say that I did indeed own plasmatelevisions.com. Want to go to Google, figure out, or Word Tracker, figure out, you know, how many people are going to the plasma televisions? How many people are typing that in? Then I want to go search for plasma televisions, you know, different companies. I want to figure out what kind of profits are people making by selling plasma televisions. So I could go to different sites. Now, of course, most companies are not going to tell you how much profit they are actually making. So how can you do that? Well, you can act like the seller. You can go to eBay or you can go to places that do drop shipping. Figure out what kind of profit that you can make off of these plasma televisions. Once you do that, then you can figure out, okay, let's say a hundred people are typing this keyword into Google each and every day. At, let's say out of a hundred people, one person, you know, possibly becomes a buyer. Let's say I make $200 profit off of each television. Okay, that's $200 a day. 30 days, 30 times, 200, I think that's 6,000, yeah. Um, but you get where I'm saying, right? This is all hypothetical. So you want to write those numbers down. Say, okay, this is how much you possibly can make. But you don't know that yet because the domain name perhaps hasn't even been advertised. It hasn't marketed. You haven't marketed the domain name. There's no traffic coming to the domain name. So this is all hypothetical. But even though it's hypothetical, I want you to write it down anyways. And then we can, I can actually show you how to drive traffic and how to add more value to that domain name so that you can increase the value in the, the price of the domain name. So as you can see, it's all hypothetical, but you do want to write it all down so that when you implement the stuff that I'm about to teach you, you can increase the prices later down the road.